So this is kind of a fun video because I've never really done this. And a lot of patients ask me, what kind of instruments do you use when it comes to your surgery? So I'm a tennis player and just like an athlete, particularly a tennis player, your instruments are so important, like your tennis racket, what type you use, the type of strings that you use, the type of balls that you use, the type of shoes that you use. And as a surgeon, it's the same thing. You need to be familiar with equipment and love your equipment and know what they can do, what they cannot do. So when it comes to, let's say, an upper leg blepharoplasty, you, you see my videos, how I mark the patient sitting up and sitting down. I adjust my marks. I use a pinch technique with some instruments to make sure the amount of skin that I'm removing is adequate. And then I start. So what does that mean when I start? Well, it means getting the patient numb, comfortable, and then performing the procedure. So I make my incisions using a scalpel, which I don't have the blade on top of this, but it's a very fine blade that I use to make my incision, okay, around the pre-marked area. So within the pre-marked areas of the eyelid skin. And then in terms of removing the skin, I use certain pickups, forceps. So I have two different kinds of forceps. I, I have one that's much more finer in detail. It's a 0.5 Castro Viejo uh, forceps that's ophthalmic based. So ophthalmologists use this a lot for ophthalmology um, procedures. And the one is a slightly larger one that I use for grasping um, larger amounts of skin. I actually like this for my initial work. And these are uh, specialized scissors. They're Westcott scissors. As you can see, they're spring loaded for optimal control. I learned to use these when I was in ophthalmology residency at Stanford and I, they, they've kept with me. There's different kinds. I like this particular kind that's not too big and not too small. And I generally make my incisions with this in a very fine fashion. If I need to make slight or subtle adjustments when I'm removing skin, for instance, I use these 0.5 pickups because I can really pick up very delicate amounts of tissue, small amounts of tissue and do my work. As you can see, my hands have to be so steady when I'm doing these surgeries, like they're not up in the air. So it's all about training yourself to like place your hands on the patient's face when you're operating in a very comfortable fashion with the patient, but your hands are not shaking. You need to be as still as possible as a surgeon and, and using these instruments in the right ergonomic fashion, keeping your body posture correct and, and allowing for your hands to rest on the patient's face allows for you to really do it in a way that you're not having any tremors, but you're completely in that state of fluidity and being stable. Corneal protectors, they're made of metal. This is what I use in the eyes when I'm doing lower eyelid surgery uh, or if I'm doing a ptosis repair and I'm kind of working from the inside of the upper eyelid. This protects the eyeball. I put some ointment on them, some numbing drops. Patients don't even feel these. I take them out at the end of the case. They look a lot more scary than they really are. They're just contact lenses, but made of metal, so they protect the eyeball. When I'm doing ptosis repair, elevating the eyelid, when the eyelid's droopy, I use calipers. This is a caliper, so you can see it um, generally, I, you know, if I'm resecting, let's say, four millimeters of muscle or six millimeters, I'll you know, make my measurements using my caliper. There's various kinds of scissors I use in terms of, you know, if I need to identify fat in the upper eyelid, I'll spread with like these tenotomy scissors, and it allows me to gently spread, find the fat, and then gen gently trim it. Now, how do I trim fat? I generally use a heating device. If there's bleeding, I generally use a heating device. This is a, a very fine needle tip that gets heated and just, I use it carefully to um, shrink blood vessels uh, or if I need to remove some fat or shrink some fat. It's a, it's a Colorado needle tip, very standard in um, microsurgery or plastic surgery, ocular plastic surgery. So we use that as well. When it comes to visualization, like, I, you know, these are different kinds of retractors I use. There's Demar retractors. There are these little Ragnells that I have here. Uh, Sen retractors. These are all different kinds of retractors that I use. Retractors that my assistant uses to kind of expose the tissue that I'm identifying with. So getting things out of the way. And when they're insulated, they're blue. So that means if a heating device touches this, it's non-conductive. It doesn't burn the skin. So I use a lot of insulated retractors for that reason. And this is a very commonly used instrument in ophthalmic plastics or ocular plastics and in other facial plastic procedures. It's a, it's a periosteal elevator. It really allows for you to kind of peel tissue off very carefully without damaging the underlying structures. I use this a lot in my fat repositioning procedures in my lower lid when I'm taking off the tissue above the bone. I actually use this elevator to kind of gently lift off the tissue in a subperiosteal plane. Lastly, we can talk about just needle holders and sutures. So how do I suture? I love my needle holders. They're, these are super light, made of titanium, highest quality uh, needle holders. So I grab the needle holder and I kind of place it and I place my sutures in there. So 
grabbing a needle holder, this is a 6 0 proline, a very common suture that I use for my upper lids. You know, the way I, I generally do not like to touch the needle at all when I'm doing my surgery, but that's how I kind of place it within the skin. And maybe we'll do another video later on on how I do my closures. But you know, it's, it, it, this is a kind of suture that I use when I hold a needle holder to place the stitches in the skin very carefully and then close up.